Good morning. Happy Halloween Eve. Yes. Here's your daily work assignment. Quarter number two, day number four, day 48 overall. PE today, it's October 30th, Friday. If you got up early enough today or saw it last night, there's a beautiful full moon that will be completely full tomorrow. And it's called a blue moon because it's the second full moon of the month. So that makes it a blue moon. We will continue reading our election guide and talking about the electoral college because that is the most important thing coming up on Tuesday for the election of the next president or the uh, continuation of the presidency of President Trump. Of course, we'll have more scary stories today and some surprises. Nobody has recited the preamble in a while. I guess you all just gave up. A little disappointed in that. It just takes a few uh, repeats every day and you'll memorize it in just five days. And it's cool to have those things in your mind and just to rattle them off. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our, you know the drill. You can do it. Turn in your scary story today. I hope uh, a lot of you share today during class. We will have a test next week on these 10 words. Gist and infer are two of the harder ones there. And we'll go over those today. This remains the same as Thursday. Uh, we didn't view this video yesterday. I hope to view it today. Punctuation review, and then you can play Punctuation Jeopardy. And I left this up here too to play the game from 1990, the Oregon Trail game. Ask your parents if they played it. I bet some of them did. Bet they did. You know, I'm so old, honestly. I can be, the, I'm old enough to be the teacher of your parents when they were in third grade. It's true. Dun, dun, dun. Mr. Bagby, our agent. I'm getting there. So geography games, and we've got another video for riddles and puzzles, which is a lot of fun. Uncle Unicorn's Brain Busters video for gifted kids. And of course, yesterday, the answers were in the video, so you can check that out again. And did you know that the teddy bear, the lovely teddy bear, everybody loves a nice teddy bear. Well, that came from uh, something that a president did. And the hint there is the word teddy, referring to one of our presidents. And of course you have the electoral vote count. And again, just to be clear, every state, of course votes, for any number of things, but for the presidential election, um, the Democrat can win California by 5 million votes, but they'll still only get 55 electoral votes. They can win it by 100 votes and still get 55 electoral votes. So that's why you can win the presidency by not necessarily having the most votes overall in the country. It's happened uh, three different times in our nation's history, and most recently in the year 2000, and in the last election, 2016, when Hillary Clinton had three million more votes, but most of those votes came from California. And then you have the representatives level. And remember, the electoral amount is is determined by the number of representatives in Congress. So California has 53 representatives in Congress in the House of Representatives because it's so heavily populated. And those are spread all throughout California in dif different districts. Plus you have the two senators, which gives the amount of electoral votes. 
So that's how that works. And we'll stop the share and jump right into our book, The Election. The candidates. Can anyone run for president? Yes, but not anyone can be president. There are three simple requirements for a person to be president of the United States. First, you have to be at least 35 years old, which lets out all the readers of this book. The founding fathers, except me, I'm reading this book. You didn't think about that, Dan Gottman, did you? The founding fathers believed that a person should have many years of experience in government before that person was ready to lead the nation. They were probably right. Second, you have to be born in the United States. If your parents took a trip overseas and you were born in England, you can't be president. Even if you came to America when you were a day old, you still are not eligible. Third, in order to be president, you have to have lived in the United States for more than 14 years. So in other words, let's say you're born in the United States and uh, you're 30 years old and then you go live in Canada for, for uh, 10 years. And then you come back to America and immediately run for president. You can't do it. You have to have been here for 14 years. So I have to wait a long time before I can run for political office? Not as long as you think. When you turn 30, you can be a state senator if you're a citizen who has lived in the United States for nine years. And when you are just 25, you can be a representative if you're a citizen who has lived in the United States for seven years. In both cases, you have to be a resident in the state that elects you. In other words, if you're representing Kentucky, you can't live in Arkansas. My mom and dad meet the qualifications for president. Can they run? Yes, but they probably won't unless your mom and dad is a member of Congress or the governor of a state. Most people who decide to run for president are well-known politicians who have worked in government for a long time. Voters want the leader of our country to be a person who has won previous elections, has a lot of experience and has already proven he or she can manage people and put ideas into action. Now, the big exception to that is of course, our current president who was a business person, um, real estate person. He was uh, on TV, he had a reality TV show and Donald Trump ran for president and won and he was never involved in politics except for voting. Can a person who is not a politician become president? Yes, I just said so. George Washington was a soldier and a farmer before he was elected president of the United States. He never even went to college. However, that does not mean he was not fully educated. Uh, people that were born in upper classes of society back then had tutors that would come to their home. But in the 20th century, the only president who had not been a politician before was Dwight Eisenhower. Eisenhower was an American general and the commander of the Allied forces in Europe during World War II. When the war was over, he retired and was appointed president of Columbia University. Both the Democrats and Republicans asked Ike to be their presidential nominee in 1948, but he said a soldier should not be president. They kept asking and in 1952, Eisenhower agreed to run as a Republican. He won and also won a second term in 1956. Many other non-politicians have run for president, but haven't won. In 1940, the Republicans nominated Wendell Wilkie, a businessman who had no political experience. Dr. Benjamin Spock, the world famous pediatrician ran for president in 1972. He got 77,080 votes. In 1968, Dick Gregory and Pat Polson, two comedians ran for president. Polson's campaign was strictly a joke, but Gregory's was quite serious. And 47,097 people cast their votes for him. And in 2012, 2012, Herman Cain ran for president. Before that, he was most well-known for being the chairman and CEO of Godfather's Pizza Chain. The sad thing about Herman Cain was he came down with COVID this year and actually died. So that's sad news for him. Can you run for president if you're in jail? No. Why don't we just pick the smartest person in the United States to be president? First, two reasons. First, smart is hard to measure. Who is to say who is the smartest person in the United States? If you use IQ tests, you will find lots of people who are geniuses. Second, just because somebody is a genius does not mean that person would make a good president. Besides being smart, the president must be a good leader, a good communicator, have good instincts, work well with people, and be liked by the public. 
There are lots of smart people in this country, but only a very few capable of leading the country. Why do people want to be president so badly? Well, there are several reasons. We would hope that candidates run for president because they want to serve their country and honestly believe they can accomplish great things in that job that will make the world a better place for everyone. A candidate may also feel they have a calling. In other words, they, feel, they may feel they were meant to be president and the nation needs them to be its leader. George Washington probably felt that way when the country was founded. Some candidates may run for president because they want to be part of history. Finally, let's admit it, some people probably run for president simply because it's the most powerful position in the world. It's the highest you can go. If you're a skater, you want to win the Olympic gold medal. If you're a movie director, you want, you want to win the Academy Award for Best Picture. If you're a politician, you just might want to be president of the United States. What are the qualifications to be vice president? They are the same. You must be 35 years old, born in the United States, and have lived in the United States for 14 years. Why are they the same? Because if the president is impeached or removed from office or dies or is incapacitated where he can't lead, then the vice president automatically becomes president. How is the vice president selected? Up until 1804, the vice president was simply the person who came in second in the presidential election. That system didn't work very well because frequently the top two vote getters were rivals who did not get along. These days, the candidate for vice president is usually chosen by the presidential candidate before the national convention. That person is called a running mate. Uh, also, if the number two person, you know, imagine if um, Joe Biden wins, then Donald Trump would become vice president. Nah, that wouldn't work. Or uh, Joe Biden becomes vice president. No, that wouldn't work either. Uh, it was decided very early on that it made far more sense for the, for the president to pick their own vice president, somebody they knew they could get along with, and that matched up with what they believed in. What would make a candidate select a particular person as a running mate? Interestingly, candidates or president usually pick running mates who are different from themselves. If one is from the eastern part of the country, chances are the other will be from a western state. If one is from the north, the other is often from the southern state. If one is slightly left liberal, the other might be slightly right conservative. If one is old, the other might be young. This is called balancing the ticket. They do it this way for one reason, to get the highest possible number of votes. Voters in Texas might not want to vote for a presidential candidate who comes from Massachusetts, so the candidate may select a prominent Texan as his running mate, as Kennedy selected Johnson in 1960. Because people in Texas will probably vote for him even if they don't like the main guy, Texans might not have liked Kennedy, but they sure did love Lyndon Johnson, and that helped Kennedy win all the electoral votes for Texas. The candidate wants to choose a running mate who will attract voters who wouldn't otherwise vote for that candidate. Of course, the candidate also looks for a running mate he can work with, who will help accomplish his goals and who can carry out the responsibilities of the vice presidential office. So what are the responsibilities of a vice president? Well, we'll get to that later and stop the share right now. And again, wishing you a happy Halloween Eve. And I hope that you have a wonderful Halloween and a safe Halloween tomorrow. Whether you can go trick or treating or not, it's kind of up to your parents and your community and your neighborhood. Uh, but I certainly hope you have a ghoulish and haunting good time. <laughs>